the movement of sediment into coastal areas of New Zealand is accelerated by human activity on land. The Hawke's Bay Regional Council is aiming to stop unnecessary sediment loss, keeping the coastal environment free from its harmful impacts. The Hawke's Bay Marine and Coast Advisory Group was formed in 2016, and it was brought about by Legacy here in Hawke's Bay, actually sent a letter to the Regional Council noting the sort of the sad state they felt that the marine environment had gotten into and the impact on the recreational fishery. And so they wrote to the council to say, we want you to do something about it. So the council, um, amongst other partners, formed this marine and coast advisory group. And the group includes um, members of Tunga Te Whenua, members of central government agencies, um, commercial fishing interests, recreational fishing interests, and us. And um, and yeah, so we meet and we collate information about the marine environment so that we can pass that information on to the decision makers so they have a full picture of the stresses that the marine environment is facing. The Hawks Bay marine environment faces kind of a lot of different stressors. The main stressor though is sedimentation. Sedimentation has always been going into the marine environment from the land. It's just with land use practices over time uh, the magnitude, so the amount and frequency of that sediment that comes into the marine environment has just gone up to more than what sort of the, the system is used to coping with. For the animals that live on the actual bottom of the sea, the sediment can smother those animals that live there. Some of the animals feed by filtering water and sifting out particles that are in the water. And if the water is muddy, then the, the sediment in the water can actually clog some of their gill structures. And the sediment can uh, make the water quite cloudy and algae needs nice clear water in order to get sunlight to grow. And algae provides habitat for a number of different other species. And so we need that algal habitat to be there. And as water slows, sediment will settle. And um, it's largely driven by flow and currents because we have different patches of areas on the coast where we know there's a large sediment load, say, coming from a river, but in areas adjacent to where that river is, there's actually no sediment. So the currents are moving that sediment around. It's just difficult to track it completely. So we use our ROV that we take underwater, and we can go to certain spots and look and see if that area is actually muddier than it used to be, or if it's actually quite clear, and if the ecosystem is different between those two places. Sweet, so I'll put it down? Yeah, go ahead and put it down. HB Max started working with the Sustainable Seas National Science Challenge a couple of years ago. And part of that project is to understand, it's a wider project to look at how you can enable sort of management of the marine system to become more sustainable and healthy and, and a better ecosystem. So part of that is the Sustainable Seas team is doing some modeling where they're reducing the amounts of sediment in the bay and then seeing what, how long it takes the ecosystem to come back, what that looks like. And so the group is working with them to come up with a model to understand what sort of gives us the best you know, bang for buck in terms of how much sediment we can actually reduce in the system and what sort of impact that will have long term. So we're standing on the side of the Tutai Curry River where we have one of our instruments, an ISCO instrument, on the side that does some sampling for us. There are 20 in the region. Once the river level comes up high enough, then the sampler kicks on and it starts taking samples regularly, however frequently we choose to set it to. The bottles that are collected from the samplers that are full, they get sent to the lab and analyzed for how much sediment there is in there and what the sediment looks like in terms of grain size, if it's muddier or sandier, that kind of thing. The interesting part about Hawke's Bay and Hawk Bay in particular is that there are three river inputs into it. Um, and so when there's a big rain event, you can get quite a big sediment load that you can see even from satellite images, just from those rivers all together inputting at the exact same time into the coastal area. So one sort of main purpose of the ISCOs is to allow us to capture all of the land changes that we're trying to help 
encourage farmers to do. So they measure what it's like now, and then when people start to make changes, we can start to capture the difference in load over time. And so that's a big purpose of what the ISCOs are trying to do. We put the debris dam up by that up willow, by the willow there yep. to stop all the, the runoff and the, the neighbor's property. Yep. Coming down on Lifestyle farming couple Chris and Joe Haynes are one of many in the region who've taken action in their catchment with the help of the council to capture sediment and control runoff from the property. So you can see even a lot of sediment coming down already. So if we put the debris dam in, that will actually catch that. Yep. It's 35 hectares. We basically have heifers and sheep, or finishing lambs, and of course a few horses and, and uh, yeah, chickens and dogs, the usual lifestyle block. We've been here for almost 20 years. She was pretty dry, pretty barren. The gully itself was full of blackberry very denude of trees, uh, which sort of shocked us a bit with the heat of Hawke's Bay. It needed a, quite a bit of management to, to bring it round. I think what shocked us the most was the slipping. When we first arrived and you'd get uh, quite a heavy rain, we would get slips in, in the gully and up, up higher. So we planted poplars and willows uh, up the creek and uh, up on hillsides that tended to slip a lot. So we'll, we'll do a variety of um, natives through here. We're going to actually get your um, flaxes and things along the stream and uh, get your... Andrew Burton from the uh, Hawke's Bay Regional Council contacted us a number of years ago as we were a hot spot for sediment going down into the Ahuriri estuary. And here yeah, we were quite agreeable to planting riparian barrier, particularly along here, and uh, native trees up on um, a bare side of the hills uh, with cages around them just so that we could continue farming around them while those trees were still protected and growing. One of the other big things that we've actually learnt um, over the years is to be very flexible and to make changes when need be, make alterations if they have to happen, country changes, things change around us, um, weather patterns change. So yeah, you have to be prepared to actually alter your plans and alter the way you, you do things. Yeah.